Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a 1958 film called Ashes and Diamonds. This is the Criterion edition, Blu-ray edition that was released earlier this week in August uh, 2021. Previously it's been on the uh, uh, in the collection as a DVD. <clears throat> it's a very famous Polish film um, that covers one day in May of 1945. This is the day when the Germans surrendered. The, uh, the fight against the Nazis is over. Uh, but <clears throat> Poland, unlike other countries that could really celebrate and, uh, their, their, uh, their liberation, uh, they were still at war, at war with each other. Um, the communists uh, seemed to be taking over the country. Uh, which means they were going from Nazism to Soviet Union communism. Uh, but the, their partisans, um, nationalist partisans, uh, who were both anti-Nazi and anti-communist. So the film opens, and the film is set in this one single day in May 1945. It opens with an ambush on a country road uh, where two men in a jeep are, are uh, assassinated in this ambush. We learn very quickly that uh, this was not the, um, uh, these, these two men that were killed were not the intended victim, which, uh, which was a Communist Party um, uh, bureaucrat uh, who was there back from the Soviet Union to help lead the country to uh, to its new nationalistic identity as part of the Soviet Union. So then the action moves to a hotel, and, and much of the rest of the film is filmed in this hotel, in which all the characters crisscross. The, in, the intended victim, the assassins, um, the, uh, uh, we get uh, the nationalists, the communists, the Russians, or have a presence, uh, the aristocrats. Uh, so it, it, it's kind of, uh, uh, we go from the upper floors to the basement. And um, the, in, in this kind of struggle is where, where is Poland going to go? Um, and a romance develops. The main character, uh, who is a young man who has survived the uh, Warsaw Uprising, he wears dark glasses because he says he spent too much time in the, in the sewers, a film that uh, Vida made a couple years earlier called Canal. Um, and when he gets involved in this romance, and especially considering that he's killed the wrong victim, so even though the war itself is over, there's still unnecessary slaughter being done, he begins to question his... Um, his dedication to the cause, his wanting to get back to a normal, regular life. He had been a student in Warsaw before the war. And um, so it's a, it's a story of a character who's kind of like lost in, his, in these historical forces that, that, he, uh, that he just is out of sync with. Uh, nothing is going his way in life. Um, and... The main actor, whose name I won't even attempt to try and pronounce, well, it gave, gives quite a sensational performance. He, he is sort of, he's been, he was considered in this, this film, within this film, the success of it with Polish audiences as the Polish James Dean. And there are moments in this film where I certainly got the sense of rebel without a cause, uh, especially in the romance. You, you get the sort of James Dean, Natalie Wood, uh, romance from Rebel Without a Cause to people who have been, who feel damaged and out of sync, and they they find some sort of connection together. And this actor dresses like it's 1958. The, the movie's set in 1945. These dark glasses. He he has a kind of uh, that Dean Marlon Brando kind of rebellious quality to him. Um, leather jacket. Uh, and it sets him apart from all the other characters. And, and this is based on a novel, and the novel was um, 
focused more on the Communist Party um, figure who was supposed to be the, vic the victim of the assassination. And, uh, uh, but um, uh, Vida changed it around to the focus on this one's, uh, this uh, rebellious character, the assassin, instead of the one being assassined. Huge hit. Uh, and with with the younger Polish audiences, but of course the Communist Party was was uh, was wasn't too happy with that <laughs> that change of direction that from the novel to the movie, so they allowed it to be shown in Poland, but it couldn't be sent to the Cannes Film Festival, and and Vida had already become a, a world famous uh, film director with his previous two films, The uh, Canal and Generation. Uh, and this film we're considered like his uh, war trilogy. And in the supplements we get a discussion, I think it's from around 2000, maybe a little bit earlier, with Vida, one of his main collaborators and a, um, a scholar, uh, critic of Polish films. And it, it, this is a terrific interview and Vida talks about his influences and uh, basically John Ford, William Wyler, Orson Welles, uh, basically Greg Tolan. Greg Tolan, the great cinematographer, worked with all three of those directors and with his deep focus um, uh, kind of black and white cinematography and the cinema, you know, it, this film, as I say, looks looks fantastic. My <laughs> untutored eyes, this is just a beautiful uh, looking uh, rendition of the film on this Criterion uh, Blu-ray. And he wanted the feeling of the kind of excitement of American films. He also mentions Asphalt Jungle, uh, the John Huston uh, film. And as I said, they, he wasn't allowed to send the film to Cannes, but somehow, Cannes Film Festival, but somehow he was able to get it to Venice Film Festival. Uh, but he wasn't allowed to go himself. So the main actress in the film of, of the romance, uh, she goes. And, but it wasn't in competition. It wasn't allowed to be in competition. But then um, René Clare, the, the great uh, uh, French movie director who went back to silent film days, he saw it, thought it was really something special. Arthur Rubinstein, the pianist who was a, uh, lived in America but was Polish, uh, he got him to see it. And the two of them really you know, said, because it was just on an off-the-wall kind of little movie theater. It wasn't part of the actual, uh, the, the actual uh, big-time festival. And um, they were singing the praises, and then they, this is something special. And then uh, the film and Vida were able to, uh, they, they gave him a kind of special award. Um, and and Vida, says, uh, Vida says a lot of interesting things. One of them is, is regarding censorship, like working in a uh, a uh, kind of uh, dictatorship where censorship is very much, you know, it's got to be it's got to be in line with what the nation the the uh, of what the uh, ruling party wants it to focus on and and um, and not to uh, challenge anything that the uh, party is uh, is promoting and. And uh, so uh, Vida says it's much easier in that kind of situation uh, to show things rather than the words. It's so much harder for them to, um, uh, to, to censor visuals because visuals can be so ambiguous. You, one, even within the party, one, one faction might look at the, oh, that's okay, and the other faction, oh, no, this is, this is you know, the, we, we, we don't want to show people in this way. Um, then we have uh, the commentary, and I guess the DVD was from 2003, Annette Insdorf, and this is a marvelous commentary. I mean, this is, uh, she wrote a book about uh, Vida. She knew him well, translated for him when he came to America, um, and she's uh, taught him in college. This is like taking a class, a college listen, listening to her commentary is like taking a class at her, at a university. and. Uh, she talks very slowly and, and very precisely, and much of it is scene specific. So she says, notice this, notice this, notice this, and you know, to my eyes, I, I don't notice everything. <laughs> I, I can't perceive all this stuff myself. Sometimes I, I like to be, um, I, I, I like it to be pointed out to me because it makes 
the film that much more um, uh, meaningful. Um, and, and these kind of commentaries that Annette Instorf gives really, really enhances the, um, the, uh, um, the appreciation that you can have of uh, Ashes and Diamonds. And, and then she, there's also, and this is special for the uh, Criterion Blu-ray in 2020, she recorded a video essay on, um, on Ashes and Diamonds and uh, Andre Vida's career uh, in general. Then we also get a fold out, um, and it includes a essay by Paul Coates, and that's very good too. Um, and this is the artwork on the cover. It's all red and white, as is the as is the cover of the physical copy, and 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 also we get the red, white, and some black in the on the disc and red and white is the color of the uh, Polish national flag uh, but red and white uh, works as even though this is a black and white film red and white works its way through uh, you can imagine the red and white and uh, and some of the final scenes of the film um, so again a really good I mean this criterion is really the, the transfer is great this is a really terrific movie I'm, I'm not very well versed in uh, in uh, Eastern European uh, cinema in general Polish films Kieslowski I know I have seen one other by the film and I didn't realize it until I saw this that he went to France and made a film called Danton with uh, Gerard Depardieu and I had seen that um, but I had not seen any of his Polish films, and they're they're really terrific. Uh, or at least Ashes and Diamonds. This is this is the kind of film when you see it and you learn to appreciate it, you really want to see the rest of his work. Okay, that'll wrap up this video. Uh, as always, thanks for everybody who who watched. I really appreciate it. You guys take care. Catch you next time.